realagriculture.com presents farming forward sharpen your soil health expertise with cover cropping nitrogen management and advanced grazing brought to you by the farm resilience mentorship program Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Farming Forward. Today, I'm in Wallenstein, Ontario to talk cover crops with Brett Israel from 3Gen Organics. Brett is going to tell us how cover crops fit his farm. He's also going to share strategies for terminating cover crops in his production system. Hey, Brett, let's start with 3Gen Organics. Give us a snapshot of your operation. Well, hey, Bern, happy to have you here today. As the name 3Gen Organics implies, it's three generations of Israels all farming together. I get to work with my parents and grandparents every day. Uh, today, we're farming about 800 acres certified organic. It's some additional land that we're in the transition process, trying to get it ready for organic production. Uh, we have a farrow to finish organic swine herd. And of course, we're standing today in our on-farm store, so we direct market a lot of what we produce right back to our community. Uh, we get to sell our pork products to folks all across Ontario, and the farm store is kind of the culmination of all those efforts. Hey, tell us some more about your approach to organic farming, Brett, um, you know, and the role played by cover crops. You know, you know, what are the benefits they provide? When we think about how we want to be good stewards of the land, I think integrating cover crops is such an important part of that. You know, cover crops can provide a wealth of benefits to our operation, everything from additional weed control, added diversity, pest management, and uh, nitrogen for our nitrogen-hungry crops. So we really think that cover crops play a vital role in our farm operation. And as an operation that direct markets a lot of what we produce, being able to take customers out to the fields, you know, see the beneficial pollinators in a clover field, and explain to them what we're trying to do, uh, it really helps to bring home the message about good agricultural stewardship. Brett, tell us more about the cover crops that you grow and where they fit in the, in the crop rotation. We've been experimenting with a variety of different cover crops to fit the context of every different situation in the operation. You know, you need different tools to address different problems, and so different cover crops can play different roles depending on what's needed. Uh, in the, for the most common cover crop we'll grow will be different types of clovers. So we grow red clover in addition to crimson clover and bursium clover. And these are great options to have after a small grain crop preceding a corn crop. They help to provide ground cover, weed suppression, reduce soil erosion, and provide a really nice nitrogen benefit. We also will use cereal rye as an overwintering cover crop to set up our soybean acres. Of course, the cereal rye is not going to be fixing nitrogen, but it does a great job to keep the soil covered over the winter and help to suppress some weeds, ultimately leading to really nice, clean, organic soybean fields. Now, as an organic farmer, you know, chemical termination is not necessarily an option when it comes to cover crops. You know, what are your options when it comes to termination? So that's one of the best questions. How are we going to terminate cover crops when we're not using uh, synthetic chemistry to do so? And it's definitely taken a fair bit of learning to get to a point that we feel comfortable. I think a lot of folks look at maximizing biomass uh, as the main objective of cover crop growth. And that might work in some situations, but when we're not using synthetic nitrogen, we really have to manage the cover crops and terminate them properly so they don't get too growthy. Overall, you know, how do you assess the impact cover crops and your ability to manage them has and, and will have on the future of 3Gen Organics? So cover crops are a tool, and like any tool, if they're used properly, they can have some fantastic results. We have seen that we can be growing 70 plus bushel per acre organic soybeans with no row crop cultivation when we utilize that CRI cover crop. We can also be growing, you know, 240 bushel an acre corn if we have a really succulent legume cover crop that's preceding it. Both covers can help to suppress weeds, they keep the soil alive. At the same time, though, We've also had some disasters where, you know, if that rye isn't cut and we're roller crimping, we could be seeing 15 bushel an acre beans. Or if that cover crop's the manage before corn, that 240 turns into 100 bushel an acre pretty quickly. One of the things that we've been looking at is a multi-pronged approach dependent on the situation. So if we're going to be focused on growing a cereal rye cover crop where we want it to overwinter, we have had really good success letting that rye overwinter 
cutting it for forage in the middle of May, letting the stubble regrow for a week to two weeks, and then working it with shallow high-speed disc passes to effectively open up the root balls and let them dry out. We can then seed soybeans in that situation start of June. If we're going to be talking about a really nice red clover stand that we want to plant corn into, we are moldboard plowing that down in the fall preceding our corn crop and that allows us to have excellent clover termination and a really beautiful seed bed to plant the next year's corn crop into. So different contexts depend on the situation. What about uh, timing termination, Brett? You know, is it better to kill the crop in the fall or in the spring? You know, what do you need to consider there when making that decision? I don't want to sound too much like a politician, but it depends, right? Uh, when it comes to the ideal timing in our experience, it really is dependent on what tools you have to work with. So if you're a farmer that has more tools in their toolbox, you know, maybe that spring termination is a better method. For us, we're trying to find ways that we can allow the cover crop to overwinter, like the cereal rye preceding soybeans. But in a situation like we're trying to grow corn and spring plowing is really not an option for us, we can't, you know, we don't want to spray that off, we can't spray it off. We have found that we can still build organic matter, we can see increased soil biology diversity and better corn yields by having that red clover cover crop and plowing it down in the fall versus not having a cover crop at all. So within our situation, within our context, we want to focus on having adequate uh, termination and it depends on what we're trying to terminate and what we're setting the soil up for. For corn, we need that cover crop terminated and the fall is the best time to do so. We also are starting to utilize a rotary cutter in our system, which has allowed us to uh, ma better manage the growth of the cover crop. We don't want that cover crop preceding corn to get too growthy because the carbon to nitrogen ratio will get out of whack and we're gonna start to produce too much lignin in the cover crop. And that's gonna take more nitrogen to break it down, which will actually bring a drag on that corn crop. So now we're scouting our cover crops, you know, in that September time frame going out there and clipping them back with a rotary cutter where we see fit. And that way we're keeping the cover crop young, digestible, so the soil can break it down and provide some excellent fuel for next year's corn crop. One last benefit of that is that we're, that act of cutting in September helps to knock back some of those perennial weeds, which of course can be an issue to manage in all production systems, but especially in organic ones. Brett, what about a minimal tillage approach, you know, something like strip till, you know, how does that or does it fit into your termination strategy? So I think strip till is an excellent system and certainly if we could develop, you know, increased uh, automated robots for an organic situation, that'd be a great fit for us. As it presently stands, we still depend on full width tillage to provide weed control when it comes to our corn production. But in the case of managing a cover crop preceding soybeans, our best soybean yields in the past three years have all come from fields that had cereal, cereal rye preceding them as an overwintering cover crop, just taking two high-speed disc shallow cultivation passes in you know, the end of May time frame where soil erosion is not nearly as much of a risk as it would be over the winter. So we're trying to make it work. I think it's an excellent practice that lots of producers can look at, conventional, organic, somewhere in between. One of the exciting things about the cereal rye approach is that we found success seeding rye at various times of the preceding year. As early as September and as late as late October after grain corn harvest, the cereal rye provides some excellent weed suppression even in a you know, chemical-free organic system. Hey, what about uh, planting green? Um, you're always innovative. You've tried rolling and crimping fall rye and planting directly into it. What have you observed? So again, it really comes down to context. In our situation, we have never been able to have roller crimp cereal rye planted green. Those soybeans will never yield in our system, have never yielded, as well as beans where that rye is removed from the field. We want the rye to provide the overwintering coverage, the early season weed suppression, but we've had much greater success cutting that, that rye for forage, providing some extra feed for the pigs in the process, and then working that rye stubble, seeding the beans into the worked rye stubble. 
Now, I don't have the data to explain why that has provided such good weed control, but my theory of the case, and you know, talk to brighter people on it, my theory of the case is that we know that rye is an alleliopathic crop. You know, it wants to, it, it secretes a, a natural uh, herbicide, if you will, to prevent the germination or activation of a lot of annual broadleaf weeds. And I think that when you cut it for forage, you don't kill the plant. The rye wants to try and regrow. And so after you cut it, you see all these little, you know, rye stubble trying to regrow. If you give it two weeks to regrow, I think that the intelligent design behind the rye plant is like, oh my goodness, we need to focus on regrowth. We're going to create as much plant protective compounds as we can, more alleliopathy, suppresses more weeds. And so we're not planting green, but we're able to have a hybrid approach that utilizes the best of low, no fall tillage in that situation, overwintering cover, but still achieving high soybean yields and clean fields. So it's all about how are we gonna manage it and what are we setting up? We want to feed the soil for the crop we're growing and it can take a different approach depending on the context. Hey Brett, great stuff. I appreciate you making some time for Farming Forward. Appreciate it, Vern. Have a good one. If you enjoyed this video and want to continue to sharpen your soil health expertise, I encourage you to go to farmlearninghub.ca to learn more.